Cast TV here with another Path of Exile video. This time we're going to talk about uh, the Path of Exile announcement 3.15 X edition. And I just added a couple of notes after watching the uh, the live announcements uh, with a few things that I wanted to bring up and talk about. So I'll take the things that stood out the most for me uh, at first glance. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to be missing a couple of things, but I wanted to make a shorter video rather than uploading the entire, you know, five, six days uh, content of me just doing a live reaction. So here you go with some of the notes that stood, stood out a lot to me. Uh, it was basically the league mechanic, which you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, I'm going to talk about this first. Unearth remnants. There were some of them having more impactful uh, mechanic or modifiers instead of being a little harder and then a little bit better loot, they had things like Im complete immunity to certain types of damage, which means that some builds won't be able to do so certain uh, types of uh, encounters. And therefore you'll have to place your detonations in positions that does not open up those specific enemies or those encounters because your build is not able to actually do it. I'm not sure if I like that approach personally, because I feel like, <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I, I don't think there's a good balance, but it's it's impactful, sure. Because what it's going to do is it's going to prevent certain builds from encountering certain encounters. And if we take the actual modifier of being immune to physical damage, it's going to make any physical build not able to do it. But any build that is not doing physical damage is going to have no negative impact for doing that specific encounter. So that's free loot, so to say. I'm not sure if I feel how I feel about it. I also felt that the, the way they were detonating looked very sluggish to be quite slow. Uh, I'm not sure how people will react to that in general. Um, the other aspect of the league mechanic was the trading part, which you can see here on the screen as well with the uh, different NPCs for trading. I kind of like the idea of it, um, kind of a slow down process of it. I like the guy that allowed you to get different crafting modifiers by paying more of the currency that you get from these encounters to get certain crafts happening on the item that you've chosen to get, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, it's just a different type of deterministic uh, reward structure when you're buying your gear this way, uh, based off a set of well-rolled items, so to say. I think it's a pretty cool system. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing special in general. It's just a different approach of a deterministic reward structure, which I think is a really cool thing to do in a league like this. I do have to say, though, that the portals, which I hope is a league challenge uh, reward, looks fucking amazing. It, like, hands down. I have the Exocon fucking uh, Devour portal, which is fucking beautiful. But the portal effect from this challenge league is probably the best looking portal I've ever seen. Uh, I, and, and on that note, I will say that the supporter packs uh, that they released with this uh, league is actually both looking good. Normally for me, it's always been like a 50-50. One of them is really good or good, and the other one is completely trash. I will have to say that this time they've actually made really good ones. So I'm actually very happy about it when it comes to the supporter packs. If you guys are interested in those, check them out. I think they're really cool. They also introduced a new defensive uh, baseline stat called Ward, which directly makes me think about Last Epoch. And to give you guys some context, for those of you who haven't played or tried Last Epoch, definitely should try it out. You can type exclamation mark Nexus here in the chat if you want to check out the game right now. Uh, Ward is basically energy shield, and it's a it's a uh, in Last Epoch it's a energy shield that decays over time. In Path of Exile, it will basically be like a layer of defense that, when consumed, it will take a couple seconds before it restores. So it's sort of like energy shield, but not really. <laughs> it's a bit hard to explain actually. Uh, not sure how I feel about it, but it feels like a buffer, like an HP buffer, sort of like having a molten shell uh, being active as a defensive buff. But this time, uh, the ward is sort of a uh, more permanent uh, approach from baseline from your gear. And there are also some uniques that you can play with this to scale ward as your main source of defense. It seems like a pretty interesting approach to it. I'm not sure how I feel about it. We'll see how well it's going to pan out. So we have a lot of nerfs. Uh, so this is a big topic. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions in the in the comment sections below about this. I don't want to take too much time on this video, so I will just talk about my opinions on the big nerfs and what I feel about it. And I just want to hear you guys' take on it as well and see how you guys feel about it. And we're not going to take too much time in, the, in here. So basically, the nerfs that they're doing is extremely, extremely big. And the idea behind it to my understanding is that they just want to slow down the power creeping a lot but there's a lot of problems with this 
because at the same time as they're nerfing pretty much everything, uh, in Flask, we're going to talk about that as well, they're also increasing the difficulty of Act 1, and they said that uh, over the course of a year, based on their uh, planning, that they will have touched everything in every act. And the changes they do on the act changes will also reflect the appropriate monsters in their map stage levels as well. Now, I don't mind that in maps, but honestly, like I've played this game for over eight years and over 26,000 hours. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that anyone who has played this game a fair bit of time don't like going through the acts. We just want to go through the acts so that we can play the games, which is uh, doing maps and the actual ending, and that's where the game starts. So making the earlier acts harder, I don't think that's going to affect a lot of us that have played this game a lot, because some a lot of us, well, not a lot of us, but quite a few of us have played uh, the CIS uh, League, for example, the Gauntlet, where everything is ridiculously fucking hard, and I don't think that the changes is going to bring it to that level, obviously not. So I don't think it's going to affect us that much. But if you then translate this to the casual player base, as Chris Wilson were referring to the 85% uh, player base um, ish, um, th that's actually pretty big. I mean, why would they increase the difficulty of the early acts? I understand that it should be more challenging, but power creeping is not really something that we see until uh, mid maps or later maps, right? That's where the power creeping issue is from my perspective, not in the campaign. Casual players don't have the possibility to, they don't have, they, they don't uh, stream for a full time uh, job and play this game 10 to 20 hours a day on league releases. They, they, they don't do that. That just doesn't happen. And making those type of players have a longer progression time before they get to maps uh, is not going to be very good for them in general. Uh, obviously, only touching Act 1 is not going to be a significant impact, but as time progresses, the it seems like their idea with this is to uh, put this change on all acts as they move forward. I'm actually, from my perspective, it, it I, I doubt it will affect me, but I'm also trying to have two different uh, perspectives when I go through these things, which is why it's very important for me to get you guys' opinions on these uh, things with nerfs, because I don't want to have a... Um, disconnected point of view from how the majority of the player base actually uh, perceives these things. Because for me, it's, I'm not going to get affected by it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I do believe that casual players will have a, a rougher time or a harder time progressing through. And I'm not a very big fan of the game becoming less and less attractive for new or newer players. Uh, personally, because in the long run, the game wouldn't exist or be good or have a player base if it wasn't for the extensive amount of casual players that actually uh, ultimately uh, acts as the foundation of the game and the community. So that's my take on it. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. I think it's going to be fun to see the game actually becoming a challenge again. This is something that uh, me and many other content creators and many other people in the community have advocated for for a very long time to actually see a challenge in the game because it's just been flash piano running through everything and then just, you know, you're done, right? So I think that in the long run, it's it's more about getting used to it. Uh, and I think it's going to be a very good change ultimately. But I'm concerned with how the casual player base will react to it. But again, without actually getting the feel for it, uh, obviously with Harder Act once uh, for any of you guys out there, uh, we are currently recruiting healers, tanks, and uh, range DPS, yeah, especially uh, uh, Raider or, or Archer that could kite Hillock, so we can actually get past that. So if you're one of those roles, uh, please do send me a private message on Discord. Uh, please include a link to your gear and everything, and I'll inspect that in, in the hideout before we before we go and engage Hillock, of course. Um, but next nerf was also the the flasks. Now, the flask was uh, pretty cool, to be honest, because the flask changes is something I've been advocating for for many years now. I've been wanting them, them to put a cooldown on the flask so that we wouldn't just smack all the flasks and then run through the content, right? What I wanted to see was there the flask being used when it was needed. Like, are you going into a pack? Okay, I'm going to smack my flask. I have it here now, but then I might not have the flask for the next pack if I want to go fast. And if you want to be safe, you might want to wait that one or two seconds so that you can go to the next pack with the flask up again. That's how I would prefer to see it, but that's just my take. The changes was basically uh, very extensive. I'm not going to go into the details of it. I'm going to link the video to the announcement in the, in the description uh, as well. So if you haven't watched that, watch that first. I think that the flask changes are going to be very interesting uh, because of the idea that you don't get immunity. We can take a warding flask as an example and, uh, and dousing flask. I'm going to start with dousing flask. 
where you are not immune to down to burning or ignite when you have the flask up it will remove burning from you if you have if you pop a dowsing flask and if it did remove a burning effect then you become immune for a short period of time after that ignition has been dispelled if you will so you can't preemptively click the flask and then have that immunity Instead, you actually have to see that you're burning and then click the flask. Now, the problem with this, I'm going to pause the game right here. When you get a debuff, you have the debuffs up here. When you're playing in maps, a lot of builds will have a long list of buffs. That's not going to change. It's going to be a long list of buffs. And if you encounter a big pack, you might get a ton of different debuffs. And you're supposed to see that you're taking damage. Maybe you're overleaching, don't see that you're taking that damage. And look for the ignite debuff up here. And then see your HP either here or through the bars here. So you have to look up here, dodge things around you, look at the HP down here or down here, and then click the flask. That is extremely unintuitive. There is a way to bypass this by using a new type of orb on your flask that will allow you to automatically trigger the flask when you get ignited. Now that's a pretty cool system. I like that idea because it saves your wrist and fingers and whatnot. I kind of like that. The problem, of course, is that with these type of different uh, automatic triggers on your flask crafts, you're going to be in a position where you might pop a flask where you don't need it. Say you're going in to kill the fire guardian, the, the elder guardian that does the fire damage. His ignites can kill a lot of different builds, including a lot of the builds that I like to play mostly. Um, so I don't want that flask to be out of charges when I'm going through the map. So if I get ignited once or twice before the boss, then I might not have charges for the boss. And they're reducing flash charge you're gaining maps as well. That's a problem. That means I should have that trigger being not existing on that flask and sell it, actually manually clicking it myself. So the problem with manually clicking it again, it brings back to the debuffs being up here and not down here. And I have to look at the debuff, look at my HP either on this character or down here, and then click the flask. It's just super unintuitive. So I'm not a very I'm not I'm very concerned with how the flask nerfs is going to be. But I am happy that they're doing something because it's something I've been advocating for for a long time. Another thing I'm very concerned about is that they nerfed the trigger skills. I actually, I really appreciate the fact that they're attending to trigger skills because that's a big, 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 big uh, power creep feature. Automatically triggering skills, Poet's Pen, um, the um, Spell Slinger or whatever triggers your skills from your weapons and all those things. I think it's really cool because you're going to be in a position where a lot of builds are using this for utility. We can take a most minion builds with trigger weapons, uses Desecrate and uh, Flesh Offering or Bone Offering. Those are kind of fine because the mana cost of those are not that that big. But we have other builds, like my build guide for the Flame Wall Spell Slinger uh, build. Now we actually have to pay the mana cost for the triggered abilities. That means that we have to look into the actual mana sustain of those builds so that even if you're automatically slinging these abilities, you still have to pay the mana cost. Leveling through the acts with a spell slinger setup has been one of the most comfortable ways of leveling very fast through the acts. Now we have to take into consideration that we actually have to leave up a bit of mana so that when we are triggering them, we're still paying the mana cost. Now, the upside of this is obviously being able to use Arcane Surge, but the downside is that you can't reserve 98% of your mana, use a Frenzy, and trigger everything, because now you need that little bit of mana pool to actually be able to trigger them. Uh, Battle Royale uh, for the PoE Royale it... We're going to be playing that right after this video. I, I've i been talking to Chris Wilson for a long time about this, and they're only having it right now over the weekend. I There's another event coming up really soon uh, that I can't talk too much about right now. Uh, it's going to be very fun with the Battle Royale. And I've been talking to Chris Wilson so that when it's more fine-tuned uh, or further down the road, I've been wanting to collaborate with MSI to make some nice uh, big tournament around uh, the Battle Royale for Path of Exile. So I'm, I'm still in the discussion with Chris Wilson about this. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So hope you guys will enjoy that. And hope you guys will enjoy the weekend event of doing the PoE Royale. Uh, they've made so many changes to it with a more intuitive skill tree specifically designed for it. Uh, so it's really cool. You should definitely try it out. And moving on to the last part that I put notes on from this. There's plenty more, plenty more, but I didn't feel like they warranted a big discussion. So I'm just going to, again, uh, talk about the fact that I'm only picking out the things that stood out the most to me during this uh presentation and that is the 19 new skill gems meta shakeup that's what they're calling it i love the fact that they're introducing a shit load of new abilities because that means i have a lot to do as a content creator and build guide creator it's gonna be very fun to make new builds 
and uh, there's uh generally there's like three or four abilities that have really stood out for me that they saw that, that they shown that i really 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 liked uh one of them being the two different or two of them being the chaos abilities with the uh the orbs and the other one was the uh self explosion thingy that you can scale with duration they all look fucking amazing so i'm not sure if uh, that's something we're going to be looking into uh, well we are going to look into them i'm not sure how i feel about them because some of them seemed a bit clunky um we also don't know how the power creeping will feel when we get to maps right because if we are in a situation where uh, power creeping will still be the thing where you just rush through the map you don't want to play a build that forces you to think about your goddamn mana you don't want to have a build that is like okay well i i want to have as much mana as possible when i'm clearing and then i want to dump my mana when i'm doing a boss and dumping mana versus a boss means that even if you're playing a build of stacks mana, you kind of don't want to have low mana when you're using your defensive mechanisms surrounding around mind over matter, right? So there's a lot of these things that I'm not very happy about when it comes to the design of the abilities. On the other hand, we did get the Ice Orb or the Frozen Orb from Diablo 2 uh, as one of the abilities. Uh, let's see if we can actually see. This is one of the Chaos abilities that I was talking about, the Self Explosion. Looks really cool. The idea that when you kill something, that, that enemy will explode and deal damage. This is a direct nerf, uh, well, a uh, mechanic that tackles things like porcupine and bone husks. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so there's a couple of these things that looks really interesting. Uh, the battle mage one is something I never, I've never really touched upon. But then again, there are some abilities that feels a little bit weird. Like this one here looks a bit weird. It's a trap. <laughs> so I mean about that, I'm not really sure. We're not going to go too much into it. However, we have the reaper summon reaper um i know you guys have been asking me a lot about this i'm currently being spammed on twitch pms and discord about this um so the summon reaper was to my understanding it was supposed to be designed to be an, a minion that used is used as a single minion army build right so you use the summon reaper and the idea is to use that as your main minion and to my understanding is that when the summon reaper gets uh damaged he or she or it will uh, consume a nearby minion, including enemy garden if you have one, uh, to heal itself. Uh, now, there's a lot of problems about this, and um, one of them is obviously the fact that if uh, the having the minion out reduces the HP of your other minions. So that means that if you want to use any other minion, it would have to be temporarily summoned minions. Now, what are the best temporarily summoned minions in the game right now? Enemy weapon. SRS, Phantasms from Soul Rust. Those are like the three best uh, minions you can use, unless you go with some sort of triggering through Cyclone for the sake of using Herald of Purity, or the new Absolution, which I'll talk about in a bit as well. That's like kind of the only fucking things you want to go with, or you can go with the Golems, but then you'd have to play an Elementalist, because when the Golem is consumed, it's then counted as it's dying, and then it's dying means that you automatically resummon it, and you don't have to worry about it, so that's another approach you could do. Because you kind of want to use a fucking Karen Golem when you use a minion that is doing uh, physical damage that you are want to scale. The Karen Golem should be there. So having Elementalist to resummon that one automatically is a good way to deal with it. Um, <laughs> Chris Wilson said that um, you could clear fast with it or clear faster when it was based around the player skill level. And the only thing I can feel is how is this going to be able to compare with having five specters shooting two screens away now obviously we don't know how they're going to nerf specters so, but i'd rather i'd assume they're not going to do any extensive nerfs there is a reason that using melee minions always have slower clearing compared to using ranged minions there's a reason carrion golem builds is slower clearing than flame golem builds there's a reason the Syndicate Operative Spectre builds is vastly superior than any other build or minion build in the game in terms of clearing. Because they're fucking ranged. Nothing can compete with that. Ranged Mage Skeletons clears faster than melee skeletons. And I will always argue that melee skeletons are vastly superior. But for clearing, you can't compete with ranged minions. Just doesn't work. Uh, I'm not sure how a Reaper build will work. The only way I can see the Reaper build uh, function properly would be with temporarily summoned minions, and I will most likely look into Animate Weapon. Um, 
because of the simple fact that I'm assuming that the Reaper is a physical minion spell tagged skill, therefore able to scale with everything we use to scale enemy weapons with. And it's fine if they're being consumed. So I think that the enemy weapon will be one of the best things to do. I also believe that SRS can be a, a nice little introduction to um, being a big contester when it comes to Reaper builds. Uh, you also have the, um, what's the sword name called? Thank you, Frobel. The Iron Mass uh, Impale Skeleton is absolutely another approach that could work, uh, allow, uh, which also allows you to use Herald of Purity for the Cycloning if you now want to, uh, and have Impale main Skeletons, right? Again, all of these things are melee, which means that your clearing is going to be significantly lower than many other summoner builds, but Soul Rest have ranged uh, abilities. So you can have a single target Reaper, Reaper and have Soul Rest for clearing. So there's a lot of different aspects to it. It's going to be very fun to go through the PUB of this, though. Uh, you also have to keep in mind that the Reaper is a, a minion that's causing bleeding. So there's a few things that you can do with that as well. Um, Absolution was another ability that they talked about when it comes to minions, which seemed like a really cool thing. Uh, it did say that when the ability killed something, it would uh, summon a minion, right? So obviously there's that. Uh, however, I hope that it has the uh, effect of you hitting a rare or unique. We'll have a chance to summon a, a sentinel, similar to how DB works, for example. But I definitely think that it can be a really cool thing to do. So this is the new ability, the Forbidden Right, which is also one of the other Chaos builds that I think was really cool uh, to um, to look at. I love the the visualization of it, the the graphics. I, I love everything about this ability. <laughs> It's going to be very fun to see. And here's the Diablo 2 uh, Frozen Orb. Uh, honestly, I think that this ability looks fucking terrible. Uh, it is completely shit um, designed when it comes to the uh, artwork of this. It just looks like shit. But I mean, it's the D2 uh, Frozen Orb. So I mean, uh, you know, we're definitely going to play something with it. But it looks terrible. Um, this is the Battle Mage Cry, uh, which I think looks really cool as well. Um, I haven't really bothered too much Battle Mage builds, but I think this one might actually make me want to try it out. But that's basically the main skills that I saw that stood out the most for me. Um, and these notes that I just talked about are the ones that stood out the most through the presentation. I want to keep this video not too long. I probably over overstepped the length of this video. I want to hear you guys' opinions in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions, fire away. I will read all the comments. I probably won't have time to answer them all, but do hit me up. I will read every single comment. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I have plenty of build guides coming out, plenty of crafting guides and a lot of guides. And do check out the POE School playlist I have in the, in the descriptions below as well with a lot of mechanical guides that can help you get better at the game and learn different mechanics and how to understand the game as it is very, very complex. And uh, that's about it. Don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe for more content. Till next time, boys. Stay safe. And keep rocking.